Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're going to start tonight's first adventure, one that uh, I have entitled Jacob's Ladder. But before we get into it, we are, as always, going to meet all of our adventurers and just learn a little bit about who they are and, and what they bring to the world of uh, the world of D&D &D time. So uh, first off, let's just move down the line. We have uh, Astraea returning. Uh, would you like to tell us a bit about Astraea? Sure. Astraea is a girl with a secret uh, that shall not be named. And she is currently. I was, gonna... <laughs> I, was I was just I was just immediately about to ask what the secret was, and then you you put the kibosh on that straight oh, yeah. away. Uh, so please go on. I'm sorry to interrupt. It's uh it's because she she was from the hermit background, so her discovery is something that should be a big deal a little bit. But uh, she's working uh, under Bartholomew in order to pay the rent, really. Okay, okay. Uh, and she's uh, she's got a hard exterior, but she's got a soft interior, both literally and uh, metaphor. Wait, she literally and metaf metaphorically. Okay, sorry, yes. it took me a moment to to rest with that. <laughs> uh, um, okay, fair enough, and um. So you're saying that Estrella is is good at heart? Yes. Okay. Um, I was actually under the impression that, uh, and I guess that's from seeing Estrella's kind of harder exterior, that Estrella was, um, if not good, at least leaning towards the neutral. So that's interesting to hear. And what is uh, what are Estrella's goals for the Land of D&D time? Is it just a money-making scheme, or um, do you have anything else that you desire out of it? Uh, for the moment, she wants to just secure herself a little bit but she does have a underlying goal of uh she wants to with the discovery she's made make a, a difference in the world uh eventually well i look forward to seeing that dream realized astrea welcome back thank you uh next we have returning we have jade twilight jade how are you this evening Annoying. <laughs> I was going to say, you sounded a little bit sleepy there. Oh, I was having a good cat nap, and then but then I was done. <laughs> Mark, no, you um, woke me up. Yeah, he never he, paid me my money either. Um, he did not pay you your Bartholomew bucks from before? I mean, I'll have to have a word from him if that was not the case. That is not what I'm talking about. Oh, you want that hard? You wanted the hard cash. I want. He watched a show. He owes me gold. Um, how much gold is it to see a Jade Twilight show? It's simple. All I ask is a measly little donation. One gold would have been nice. Our um, telling me bucks <laughs> is not gold. Um, Bartholomew, uh, you may have to speak with Bartholomew directly about that, but I'm sure um, a one gold donation, once he's realized the errors of his ways, um, would be in the cards. Maybe even a two gold donation is an apology. And Jade, um, remind us, what is your skill set? What do you bring to the, the table as, a, uh, as an adventurer here among Bartholomew's uh, shop? I am an entertainer, no noir and ride. Who got tricked into coming here with a secret little skill set to be a master thief? I like shiny things. Mm. Well, excellent. Uh, I think some of your uh, agility will prove useful in today's adventure for sure. Um, Jade, welcome back. Um, next, we have uh, a hero that's been, I think, perhaps in retirement for quite some time. We have Alto returning. It's been a very long time. Alto, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. Excellent. Now, tell us a bit about Alto. Remind us uh, what your kind of uh, what your kind of deal is. I am, I am one of those trained in the martial arts. Indeed, indeed. Um, I have been secluded for a while in quiet contemplation. Um, have you learned anything in this time of seclusion? Any uh, particular reason that you've chosen now to uh, 
come out of this uh, this period of meditation and self reflection? Sometimes, in order to help people, one must use their fists, not their words. I've decided to go back to adventuring at least for for a short time to see who I can help rather than lead to enlightenment in a more direct yes in a more direct sense well alto it is good to have you once more um welcome back and last but not least we have baron luton plunder baron yeah i i see it. my my trade contracts have been going excellent i, I have about to ask about your trade contracts the, in the trash kingdom though i don't know why they think they can pay with banana peels and Water, well, banana, but, peels um, and, uh, banana peels and bottle caps are kind of the primary accepted currencies within the trash kingdom. Um, yes, so perhaps they can make something useful for trade. Um, I mean, you collect enough of those, you can trade for some of the things that do fall into the trash kingdom that are of value, because you'll uh, you'll occasionally find the uh, the shattered, uh, the old kind of rusted jewelry or the shattered diamond that people would be willing to trade for in you know these kind of more bottle cap and uh, rotten fruit based currency systems. So it's not completely uh, it's not completely valueless, although certainly not as good as hard coin. Perhaps I can use this to my advantage. My franchise arrangements those strange cotton candies uh perhaps i could set up a stand right beside my trade stall as well i have no doubt that if anyone could you know turn a profit off of banana peels it would be uh baron loot and plunder uh, and is, is there uh and is there anything else you wish for the world to know about the baron before we begin no just admire my beautiful tiefling horns Ah uh, yes, of course. That uh, people you wanted to let the world know that you were a tiefling. Absolutely. Um, Was there any doubt? Um, when I saw your very perfectly realistic horns, I knew that you were indeed one. They're um, authentic, well, of course, not realistic. Yes, authentic. Uh, the horns that um, well, those are just your horns. Uh, Baron Luton Plunder, welcome. Um, so, without further ado, let us begin. Um, Refind Your Story Starts is in East Town, uh, a small town, as you may imagine, to the east of Central City. Uh, as you walk around the town, you see you know, various people about their daily tasks, although there's a certain kind of busyness um, to the town that seems a little bit different than most. Um, there's a lot of people, like, you'll occasionally see people get into fights on street corners. Um, the kind of the merchants and, and the various kind of street criers are very aggressive. Um, and then you see them occasionally will just kind of give up. It's, it's a very chaotic scene um, among the streets of East Town. Um, rising up in the distance, you can see a tower that extends extremely high. It extends up beyond the cloud line as today is fairly overcast. And that is your destination here. You were called to East Town by a particular concerned mother whose son has gotten into a bit of trouble, apparently. That's what Bartholomew told you, at least. Um, he's been building this strange structure uh, leading upwards, this ladder that he's just been building up and up for some time now. And in doing so, uh, has accrued a great deal of debt, apparently, throughout both East Town and some of the surrounding kingdoms, including uh, Central City. His mother has hired Bartholomew's adventurers to get the debt collection agents off his case. Uh, individuals who she thinks will do him some pretty serious harm. Um, so as you're walking through the streets of the city, or um, of the town, you eventually find yourself at the base of this huge structure. Next to it, you can see, um, next to it, you can see kind of a small house, just a, a very kind of quaint looking cottage. Um, and you can see a woman that's uh, maybe in her uh, 50s, maybe kind of early 60s, who's looking up, uh, who's looking up at this huge towering structure. It, it's wider at the bottom. You can see there's large support beams holding it up, um, but eventually it just thins out into a pretty regular looking ladder that just goes up and up and up for hundreds and hundreds of feet. 
Uh, and that's the scene as you start. Uh, this woman's just kind of looking up, hasn't quite noticed your presence. Yet. What would you all like to do? I this is bigger than the last tower. I guess Jade will walk up to her. Excuse me, mother. Is there something we can do to help you? Um, oh, you're here. You are Bartholomew's adventurers that I paid for. Yes, I'm, I'm correct, yes? Yes, unfortunately. <coughs> um, Indeed. Absolutely. I... Uh, my son... I'm very worried about my son. I have been for some time. Um, he's not right. Uh, there's something wrong. He's just become obsessed with this. And she gestures towards, um, she gestures towards the ladder. It looks fine to me. It's, uh, uh, the ladder is... Uh, the ladder is fine. Um, it's the problem isn't the la the problem is exactly the ladder. The problem is that it's all he does. For fifteen years, he's been constructing this thing. It just goes up and up and up. And well, it was fine when it was just a hobby. He thinks that he can talk to the gods if he goes up high enough. Uh, he doesn't... Oh, wait a minute. Why would he want to do that? I don't know why he would want to do it. I don't understand him anymore. He he makes no sense, and, and he's pressed our finances thin. He's... Well, frankly, he's taken the money to continue to construct this thing. He, he's gathered junk from here and there. He's He's taken all of the money for our food in a lot of cases. There have been days where we haven't been able to eat because he needed to buy wooden boards to continue to construct it. Um, and you see the, the kind of portion of the ladder that you're looking at now, um, it's actually very beautifully constructed. You can see there's like steel beams that go down the side of it, like supporting the base. Um, a lot of it's kind of made of metal. Um, and um, she continues to speak. Well... He's borrowed money to continue buying construction supplies for it, and I think he borrowed money from the wrong sort of people. Uh, sounds ridiculous. It's not like the gods have any answers. They don't know what they're doing either. I, I'm inclined to agree. I've tried to tell him things like that. I've tried to tell him anything to get him out of this mindset, but it's all Jacob cares about. It's just this ladder and so up and up he's climbed and well today some of those debt collection agents that i spoke about well they came to collect their debt they followed up the ladder after him and what is the name of this debt collection agency might i ask i'm not an agency I've seen them around. We don't get too many of them in a small village like this. Um, but have you heard of the Morts? Not that I can see. They are a... Um, uh, Baron Luton Plunder, you are, uh, you are familiar with Mort. Mm. I see. Um... If you would like, if you would care to uh, explain to the others who are less familiar with Mort, who Mort is. Let us say that he has some rather unsavory business practices and, well, if the rumors are true, there was quite a thrilling adventure, so to speak, with some of our fellow adventurers not that long ago, involving quite a few Morts. But... Yes, they all looked. Story for another time. They all looked identical when they came here. I believe they're some sort of gang. Um, like I said, they don't come into our town that often. But they climbed up after him not long ago. I need you to do whatever you can to make sure they don't hurt my Jacob. 
how many thousands of feet would you say this uh, goes up, or even if it does reach a thousand? Um, she looks up, and as you can see, like as I described before, the ladder kind of uh, just kind of extends past the clouds. Um, and she says, "It's rare that the sun shines through in this particular neighborhood. I haven't seen it in eight or nine years." Not the top, at least. I don't climb it. So he's been at this for a long time. He's been at this for a very long time. It's become, like I said, an obsession. Did he fill out all of the proper and necessary work? Um, no. Building without a no. permit, I see. The... You'll find that runs a bit rampant around here. The, the cult doesn't have a lot of branches in Easttown. Well, I'll see to correct that. Um, Would you like us to destroy the tower? Not while my son is in it, but if you can bring him back to the ground, yes, I would. It may break him, but I think it would be for the, his best in the long run. I agree. I think it would also be for the best. I also agree. I like heights as much as the next kitty, but at the same time, this is ridiculous. Ridiculous is a good word for it. Um, well, um, the ones uh, in front of you, um, they climbed up. Uh, they arrived here a bit before you did. Um, about half an hour, um, I saw them disappear in, above the clouds, maybe uh, 15 or so minutes ago. <sighs> that looks a little, that looks narrow. Oh well. Shall we get started? Um, so how are you all going to um, kind of approach this climb? Um, as I said, at the bottom, it's, it's a little bit um, at, at the bottom, it's a, it's a little bit kind of wider, and there's kind of this big support structure, but eventually it just narrows out and just kind of your standard width, um, about, you know, two or so feet wide ladder. Um, it's equal on both sides, so if you wanted to, you could go single file, or you could have, like, two people climbing on each side, or you could, you know, do something along those lines. So how are you going to kind of arrange yourselves? Um, it's not like something you'll have to make acrobatics checks for unless you're doing something kind of fancy because you know anyone can competently climb a ladder it's just a question yeah, it's of a ladder brave yeah it's just a question of bravery uh as you start to get higher i won't okay. go first very right. well jay looks, looks at him you are not ah but do you have one of these in case you were fall oh. and uh i show them a peanut butter fly that i got from crixis oh man that's going to be yeah. very useful. Yeah, fine. Go first. I'm going second. But hurry up. I, um, I hurriedly start to scurry up the ladder. All right. So Baron Luton Plunder starts scampering upwards. Um, who's going to go second? And like I said, if you wanted, you could do two on each side. Or So if you wanted to go kind of at the same kind of pace as Baron Luton Plunder, you could just be on the opposite side of the ladder. Well, in that case, Jay is going on the opposite of, up the side of the ladder and starting to um, climb up with him. I'll okay, just cool. follow them. <laughs> All right. Uh, next, uh, next to Stray and Alto. I, I will start to climb the ladder, but eventually, I might decide to just go up the side of it. Okay. Um, so you're kind of. Uh, ducking behind uh, Astrea at the moment as you go up. Um, so you have uh, Baron Luton Plunder, you are at the top, uh, and then opposite you uh, is Jade, and then uh, behind you is Astrea, and then behind uh, Astrea is Alto. So as you, hands over hands, just start kind of moving upwards, um, at first, you know, it's, it's fine. Slowly the sounds of the town um, start to kind of fall behind and fade into the distance. Uh, as you continue to climb and climb upwards, um, you start to feel the wind whipping uh, as you move upwards. It's 
starts to get a little bit colder. Um, and you're kind of nearing the point. Um, you're kind of nearing the point where you're about to hit the uh, hit the cloud cover. At this point, you've been climbing for kind of a, a little bit of a fair stretch now. Um, is there anything that you want to do in this kind of time uh, as you're moving it? Are you just going to continue to just kind of like barrel through the clouds and move upwards? What's your uh, plan? Oh, what is our plan when we meet the tax collectors? Or the debt collectors? They seem a lot more like thugs to me. Yes, uh, uh, bone how sharks. About how about we just toss them off the ladder and watch them fall? That'd be just fun. Just for doing their job? That seems a little harsh. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're thugs. I don't think anyone's going to miss them. They're criminals. I mean... Murder is also a crime, but okay. Personally, I would prefer to talk to them before we throw them off, but yes, if that is the oh, only I way can. to save this child, you know, well, not child, but this person, then yes. Fine, do what you want. I'm gonna have my phone. Right. Um. As you're kind of having this conversation, um, you you move into the clouds. You can feel, you know, the moisture. Uh, and up above it, you can see starting to, as you break through, some light. Uh, the light of the sun. It was elsewhere in the world. You know, it's, it is daytime, um, despite the kind of cloud cover. And as you break through um, and you can see upwards now, eventually out of the cloud cover, you can see how high this ladder actually extends, and it is very far. Um, you can see it goes up for another two, maybe uh, two, maybe even three thousand feet up. And and as it continues up to the top, you eventually see um, at one point, fairly close, um, much closer to you, you can see a figure that's kind of hanging on to and, and leaning, holding on to the ladder, looking down at you. Um, it's tough to make out. It's just a silhouette, especially because of the bright light of the sun that's in your eyes as you look upwards. Um, additionally, even higher up than that, you can see what looks like the swirl of some kind of portal. Hmm. Interesting. That the ladder leads into and then disappears. I'm going to call up to the person. Are you Jacob? <clears throat> um... You actually, um, yeah, so you continue to climb up until you kind of get into range of him. Um, and you, you see this figure now. He's um, he's fairly old. He, he looks to be sort of middle-aged, um, bald head, uh, kind of a, a little bit of a beer gut. Um, and he's kind of hanging off the ladder. You see he's got kind of a, an axe tucked into his kind of plain tunic that he wears, plain white tunic. Uh, and he looks down to you. No, I'm not Jacob. Who are you? You got business with the kid, too? Yes, we're looking for him. Yeah, you can have, uh... You can have whatever's left of him when my boys are done with him, all right? But we got here first, so it only seems fair. Are you planning to kill him? <laughs> no, we're planning to get our money back one way or the other. If Well, if he can't accommodate us on that, uh, then, you know, we'll take something else from him, whatever he's got. Not his life. Yeah. We do want to get our money eventually. Question. Is your name Mort? Uh, how would you guess? Ah, good to know. Uh, how far right now, he, he, Yeah, he's above you on the ladder. Um, you guys are, are hanging... Um, maybe 30 or so feet below him. It's it's a little bit tough to see him from where you are. Um, and uh, so, because, like I said, because of the light from the sun, but he's uh, he's just looking down at you. Um, like I said, about, about 30 feet up, and he just goes, so um, I'd appreciate it if you stay right there. And you see he's kind of um, got a hand. He, he can see that you guys are pretty well equipped. Um, he has a hand over the axe at his back, and he's just kind of hanging. 30 feet? Yeah, upwards. 
I see. So do we want to finish this now or let him talk this through? Well, we can always do a little parlay first. Oh, hmm. of course. But uh, do we want to get the upper hand now? Um, as as you're kind of stay, saying that, you see him starting to get a little bit. Uh, you see him starting to get a little bit more nervous, uh, and you see him actually takes the hands off of his axe uh, and reaches for his hip, where he pulls out a little vial. You guys just had to keep talking, didn't you? Um, she, she, she rolls her eyes. You uh, smart. Um, hi down there. Listen, you guys are, uh, like I said, um, I would have preferred if you don't come any closer. Uh, why don't you just wait there and we can talk to you once we're done with the boy. And at this point, you see him kind of take that vial and uh, dump it on kind of a section of the ladder. He hits maybe like five or six rungs below him. Um, and... You see, it seems to be this sort of slick oil that he has now put on the ladder underneath his position. Oh, and how exactly do you expect to come down the ladder after you've got your money? Are you going to jump? Oh, it'll dry eventually. Uh, and by the time it dries, well, my friends will be here and it won't be four against one. I see. Uh, who's they, went up through the big, they went up through the big swirly thing. That was very scary looking. Ah, and they left you out here to guard it by yourself. Poor thing. Yeah, yep. You also don't look like you like hides either, do you? Uh, he kind of looks down um, for a second. The first time since you've said that, he's been kind of like avoiding eye contact with all of you. You know, he, he looks down occasionally, but for the most part up. But for the first time he looks down and he just looks back up uh, and you see his cheeks flush a little bit. Um, but yeah, he's actually very obviously uncomfortable. <laughs> like, very uncomfortable. Oh, you poor thing. She looks over at Luton Plunder and Plunder like, can I, can I, please, 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 please. I just kind of <laughs> nod with my new fancy green sunglasses on. She smiles and, autom and basically, uh, hold up. We're going to do, uh, basically acrobatics check to see if I can actually do, uh, basically jump up like next to him. Yeah, absolutely. So um, that's exactly what you needed to make was an acrobatics check to see if you were too able to avoid slipping on any of that oil that he placed. That is animal handling. Wrong one. <laughs> no, I'm on, um, no, I'm uh, on my tablet. Mort is not an animal. He's a real person. That's insulting. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm on my Tell tablet. And it's really, it is really hard to get uh, no, the dumb No worries. To, no worries. To hit the right buttons. Okay. Thank you. Well, come on. Thank you. There we go. There you go. Fifteen. All right. Uh, Fifteen is uh, is certainly enough. And as you're uh, kind of climbing over hand over hand at first, uh, kind of stalking up to him, and he's looking at you, you know, scared but confident because he's kind of placed this oil. You get to the point with the oil, and you just take both hands and pull down and move up uh, a whole big like five rungs in a single bound and get to the same kind of point where he's at. Uh, you just hear him call out, oh, oh, oh. Uh, go I'm ahead the, and... Wait, wait, wait. Go ahead and can, roll can for I initiative. The... Uh, to see who gets to act first, you or him. Because uh, he's certainly not... Uh, uh, I would like to do something as well. Yeah, everyone can can roll if you want to have an action that you would like to take at this time. All right. Um, sure. He's going to be going last. <laughs> uh, as he rolled in that one. <laughs> Um, so yeah, oh, um, Jade, like, uh, like a panther hunting your prey, you just sweep up and you are instantly ready to act. You're the first one to go here. What would you like to do? Hi, sweetie. Now, how about you be a good boy and, uh, we can let you go down and, um, I don't have to do something naughty. Uh, what uh, what action are you going to take? Or are you just going to say that? I'm going to say that and see what he does. All right, go ahead and make an intimidation roll for me. Uh, intimidation. Please hit the right button. 
Yeah, that's intimidation. Oh, man. Um, oh, God. Uh, you hear Mort just kind of just kind of stammering to himself. Um, um, uh, he doesn't really seem to know what to do in this situation, but it's also not his turn to act. Um, he's definitely terrified of you, though. Um, that's going to bring us to Alto. What would you like to do? Um, I would like to use my Air Genasi power of Mingle with the Wind uh, in order to cast the Levitate spell on myself. A oh, radical. Uh, this is certainly uh, there's certainly a lot of wind for you to uh, to mingle with. So, so I let go of the ladder and float up to him, arms crossed, and I just look at him and shake my head. <laughs> uh, oh, um, oh. If he wasn't scared. If he wasn't scared before, he's scared now. <laughs> um, yeah. He, like I said, he can't do anything yet. So. <laughs> Uh, that's going to bring us to Astrea. All right. Well, Astrea is going to look up and ask if I throw you guys a rope, can you tie it to something up there? Uh, the only thing they're really tied to is the ladder. All right. In that case, she's going to uh, reach around in her pack, pull out a hammer and some pittons, and start climbing over the slick oil by jamming pittons into the wall for handholds and footholds then okay um so you begin kind of climbing up you get to that point um i'll say since you're using the pythons it's, it's a lot easy to just like like i said there's points on this ladder where it's actually made of like metal um a lot of this section is so it's pretty hard to jam pythons in but there's like ah. cracks you can wedge them into um so go ahead and make me an athletics check and i'll give you advantage on it because you're using the pythons yay and it's a good thing you had advantage <laughs> yes, uh, yes. as you as you uh make it past the oil and get up the next chunk of the ladder uh and baron loot and plunder uh you are now also at the kind of same spot well, I have something else. just um, for this occasion oh, well. that I also got from Crixus. And I pull out Valerian's handkerchief and start wiping the oil off of the ladder oh, okay. as I slowly Wait, make my way what up. Is, what does that item do? It uh, is a pole. Here, I will just do this right here. Oh. Oh my god, it's it literally it. the perfect the perfect situation <laughs> for this yes. item. Um, all right, so he didn't you... need such dainty and delicate <laughs> objects. I traded him for some useful items for his clan. You I started yes, cleaning let... the ladder. <laughs> you uh you run this purple handkerchief chip handkerchief. I struggled with that word for some reason, over the oil and and kind of wash all of it off. Uh, and it's now on Mort's turn. Mort is going to uh, look to all of you and say I'm just going to go back down, if that's okay. That's fine. That's fine with All me. Right. I'm just going to sit <laughs> here and you guys... But before you guys he does, go, you know... Please, please let me do it. Qu question, Bef before he goes down, can I um <clears throat> slide a hand up? Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> God. Oh, God. Hey. Um, yeah, you, you palm, he does not like carrying a lot of money, but you palm three gold, two silver, and a couple copper pieces. Thank you! Uh, he does not notice, he is too busy being scared, and you're like on the opposite side of the ladder from him, so. Uh, yeah, he's, I'm just gonna stay here, and you guys go past, and then I'll go down. Or I'll stay here, or I'll, uh, don't worry. <laughs> um, so do you guys, uh, just kind of move past him now, or is there anything else you want to say to this guy? Nope, not for me. I'm just gonna go continue on up. All right. So, um, as you all kind of work your way past this very scared Mort, uh, who you see very tentatively starting to climb back down the ladder, a much slower pace than all of you, um, you eventually reach that large kind of spinning 
um, that large kind of spinning portal that I described before. Um, you are on the precipice of it. Um, it is kind of this deep green, but occasionally you'll see twinges of color kind of streak through it, a, a flash of red, um, a flash of yellow. They crackle with like fire and electricity almost. Um, it is a little bit intimidating. Um, is there anything you would like to do before you move through or? I will pray to the gods to keep me safe. Very and well. I will probably say, I don't know what kind of building materials he could have got to make this. Um, all right. Um, Clearly this man had the gods favor or this would have destroyed itself. Um, so who would like to uh, step through first? Who will, who will take the plunge? Astrea will. Having asked for protection. All right. He now believes she will be protected. All right. So, Astrea, you plunge boldly through. Um, and as you do so, uh, on the other side, um, as your head pokes through, you, your hand reaches through and you feel it pff, um, catch another rung in the ladder. Uh, and then, again, your hand over hand. The, the ladder continues past where you can see it through the portal. Uh, as your head eventually makes it onward and through, uh, you can see how much further this ladder extends even beyond this point. Um, but you are in a much different space than you were before. Um, you are in this absolute royal of chaos. Um you can see around you, you see a lightning bolt just crack in the void. Uh, you can see just kind of pieces of stone that kind of move and just flurry throughout the plane. Um, in the distance, you watch as the ladder, it just stops going upwards and it starts to move and bend and twist at strange angles. Uh, it corkscrews around, it loops, it goes flat. Um, eventually, farther up, you can see what looks like um, you, you can see what looks like this fairly large fortress that the ladder passes through. You see it enters into like a window on the side of it, pops out another one, goes back in in places, and then extends even beyond past that up into what appears to be a very distant light that the ladder eventually reaches. Uh, as you all kind of pass through this portal, oh. this is the site that you eventually see before you. Oh, I'm, I'm going to need a minute. <laughs> I'm feeling some vertigo here. Would I know if this is the um, elemental plane of air? Um, as an air ganasi, you are certain that this is not the elemental plane of air. What kind of role would you want us to do to um, attempt to identify the plane? If you want to, if you want to identify this plane, go ahead and make me a arcana check. Is I think the best uh, the best role. Well, what, are doing that, Jay's gonna, what are you doing that? Jay's going to try and hop on one of those floating rocks. Um, yeah, as you're kind of moving past, you see the rocks are just kind of like moving near. There's large, there's small ones that are like pebbles that will occasionally kind of pummel you and, and pelt you to the side. Um, and occasionally like a larger one will pass like a boulder. <laughs> um, you uh, go ahead and make me an acrobatics check as one's going by. Uh, you did animal animal handling. I'll let you keep your role. It's it's fine. Um, so seventeen plus what your acrobatics is, which is significant. Um, you jump off and grab and and latch onto one of the larger boulders and um, kind of land deftly upon it. And the boulder's just kind of floating. Um, and now you're kind of moving away from the ladder, um, but you can see up a little bit of a distance ahead. You're actually cutting off a pretty good distance right now because the ladder moves up and then cuts sharply to the side. Um, so you're actually just kind of going um, out of the way, uh, you're just cutting off a chunk of ladder. You're actually getting a pretty fair distance ahead. If you want to hop back on, after that, you might just kind of get stuck out in space, though. E. Uh, okay. okay, cool. In that case, uh, I'm going to get off. <laughs> All right, yeah, you, um, you get a, a fair chunk ahead. Um, you can see um, from your vantage point, um, while you're on that boulder, you have a different angle where you're not having to hold on the ladder. You get to stand on your own two feet for a moment, and you can see up in the distance with this kind of uh, aided vision, you can see a few figures that look like the one that you just saw, that first mort, that are kind of ducking into that fortress that I described up in the distance. Um, 
for your arcana check before uh, Baron Luton Plunder, um, you've heard stories of a plane of, of just elemental chaos by the mm. name of Limbo. So my suspicions Indeed. were correct. Indeed. Interesting. Um, how do you all wish to proceed from here? Astrea is clinging to the ladder and moving on it very slowly. Okay. So as not to fall off. Um, you are moving, like right now, you're actually, the way the ladder is kind of set up, you were put into a position where you're moving at not just straight up and down, you're actually at kind of a uh, more of like an 80 degree angle where you're actually leaning backwards as you're moving up the ladder. Um, and if you'd like, you uh, you kind of can definitely flip around to the other side so you're climbing at a more comfortable one, but it's very disconcerting at first. Um, yes. Um, as you're all just kind of continuing down um, this uh, this path, eventually, um, it's it's much more difficult at this point. Um, but eventually, you arrive at um, a point on the ladder that is pretty near to this to this fortress that I described. Um, the section of ladder that you're on when you get here, like I said, it zigzags, it, it turns back and forth. But you're actually on a flat line. It's like walking on a path at this point, but the path has very kind of narrow circular steps. You're also noticing that the ladder is made of worse and worse materials as you're moving through it. What was first this beautifully steel constructed thing, um, you're seeing just like wooden boards that are just made from like pieces of driftwood. You see like um, like a hammer that's just kind of like a sledgehammer that's been used as a rung and like a fastened to the sides. Um, you can see like, you can almost see this person Jacob's descent into madness in the construction of it. Um, so, you're at this fortress, what would you like to do? I'm close to them, right? Yeah, you're all kind of, or actually, you're a, you're farther ahead. Um, if you want to be, if you wanted to wait for them to catch up, you could have, but you, but you have a fair distance on them because of that boulder that you hitched your ride on. Just out of curiosity, um, sorry. I'm yeah, gonna please. wait on them. Okay. But, uh, just out of curiosity, I had 10 minutes of 40 foot of vertical movement. How far was um, I able to get? Um, you would have been able to have um, you would have been able to have caught up to. Uh, uh, sorry, that caught up to actually even 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 got, even gotten ahead. Um, I said I'm gonna say even kind of gotten ahead because you could have taken that similar path. Um, if you want to have kind of moved ahead and taken more daring routes, I would like you to make me an acrobatics check because you don't have full control over your levitation. Um, you would have to kind of be pushing off and, and using it at angles. It's not like a flight per se. Um, and the vertical movement will only kind of get you um, so far. So go ahead and make me an That's acrobatic right. check if you're, if you're trying to get some, some significant gains here. Um, 14, okay, yeah. You're not going to kind of fall or lose the path with that. Um, but yeah, there, there are points where you kind of find yourself coming close, but then you'll uh, grab onto the ladder again at the side. You can feel it creaking and groaning at places as the materials are getting worse, um, as you kind of put a little strain on it. But you kind of pull yourself back in and, and continue to, you know, levitate and push your way through it. Um, yeah, you're actually a fair strip ahead of, of the rest of the party as well, um, even farther actually ahead. Um, so you're, you're going to, uh, Jade, you're going to wait and look and wait for people to catch up as you look behind you. Um, you see the people behind you all kind of uh, waiting for them to catch up. And then you see, uh, you, you realize that there's only two of them there. And then you look and even farther along the ladder, you see, uh, you see Alto. <laughs> um, but JD, we're going to wait. Um, so Alto, you're, uh, you can have arrived first if there's something you want to do when you get there. Uh, just kind of wait for them, keep a lookout. Okay. Sure nothing um, go, up on us. Yeah, go ahead and make a go ahead and make a perception check. Us and Jade, you also may make a perception check as you are um, kind of looking around. Uh, and you, you, since you got here first as well, uh, seventeen. Um, uh, ignore all of that. <laughs> performance. I'll, I'll just I'll just count I'll just count your twelve roll and what's your perception score? Or it's probably also minus one, right? Unless you have a uh, no perception three. Okay, so it'll be a um, so it'll be a fourteen. Um, 
So yeah, looking around, Alto, you're you're watching the inside of this fortress, kind of looking for signs of movement, um, and you do see movement. You can see some figures within the building. Um, they don't appear to have noticed you moving along the ladder, um, but they are just kind of like, um, they're just kind of walking around. They walk with a very structured step, um, a step that implies a discipline that is familiar to you. Um, they appear to move with the kind of the grace and confidence of monks. Um, and the more you look at it, the more you relate to it and feel that this is not just a fortress, this is a monastery of some kind. Um, you um, you kind of get a similar vibe, uh, Jade, not necessarily the fact that they are monks, but you can tell that they are um, trained in combat uh, and you can see that there's motion in the building. Uh, and you guys relay that, I assume, to your party members as they reach the point that you're at. Yep. Um, all right. So you're all now at this kind of point along the ladder, the uh, the fortress up ahead of you. Mm -hmm. um, how would you like to proceed? Um, it leads through a window that's kind of on the side um, of what looks to be around like the second floor of the uh, the second floor of the building. Is there a way I can get sneak? Um, there's a way I can get sneak in, right? Um, yeah, you could just go follow the ladder and walk in through the window. You could, like, try and climb the outside of the fortress if you wanted. Uh, because you can see the ladder eventually leaves the fortress and onwards to that light I described. She looks at the rest of them. So, I can sneak in if you guys want. Yeah, I think we need more information here. I was not expecting uh, uh, all of this. Yes, I was expecting a ladder, not uh, not limbo. You hear a distance lightning crash. Hmm. Um, what do you all do? I mean, I might Jacob might not even be inside. Uh, well, like I said, the ladder continues past the fortress. The ladder just seems to pass through it. Um, the ladder eventually reaches this kind of glowing golden light. Yeah. Do we want to send her in? Maybe she can take a quick look. All right. Um, if that's the case, Jade, go ahead and make me a stealth check as you're moving forward and, and into this place, sneaking in. One moment. I'm logging into my computer so we can stop with all these stupid rolls. Um, want me to roll up for you in the meanwhile? Actually, no. I'm up and in. Oh. Okay. And and survival check. Uh, no, uh, stealth, stealth. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um. Yeah. All right. So you, um, kind of crouching down low on the ladder, you sneak into the building. Uh, and the inside, it's it's just a strange kind of makeup. You see, um, kind of some of those stones that you saw before, like coalesced to form like the base of this fortress. Uh, and then the rest of it's kind of made of steel, but the inside there's very uh, fine architecture, beautiful kind of red rugs. Um, you can see it in front of you, um, an individual that's just kind of like stalking the hall um, who walks past, uh, does not appear to notice you in the room as you tuck into a shadow. Um, but yeah, you're just in a room. Um, it appears to be like some kind of, uh, it's just like a flat floor with kind of some straw mats. It appears to be like a, a training room, like a dojo almost. Um, beyond, you can hear conversation. Anything interesting? Um, you'd have to leave the room that you're currently in and move deeper into the building in order to find anything interesting. Would appear. Uh, the ladder leads out, uh, leads through the room. Like, the ladder actually curves through the room. As it does, it actually makes a spiral, almost like DNA, and goes out the door. Uh, deeper into the monastery. Jade is having a little bit of a conundrum. She wants to be curious. <laughs> but at the same time, she knows better than go and do things on her own, especially on Bartholomew's quest. So... Helix. It's also a good way of saying it. So... Uh, she growls silently um, and basically pops her head back out to the rest of them. Come on, there's one guy down here. I don't know who it is, though. Probably another mort. 
might be no, Jacob. He... We should check it out. He didn't right. look like a mort. Um, I think it's Jacob. This is, this is a monastery. It would be full of... Uh, it would be full of monks. Um... And to describe the physically describe the person that you see, it, it, they did not look human, and they did not look like Mort. Uh, what they looked like was mm -hmm. rather, um, they had kind of this pale green skin, pointy green ears, a shock of black hair, um, and a very kind of lithe, skinny body. Um, so, uh, you all kind of proceed into this room. You see the the helix uh, wrap on the ladder up ahead. Um, and uh, you continue forward out into this room. Um, you can, like I said, you can hear conversation within. Um, there's some people that are kind of training. Um, what do you do? I'm surprised they're not more upset, so to speak. Um, they have not noticed you yet. Huh. Jay's gonna keep climbing. Okay. Um, well, it's not actually much to climb as you're moving through here. Um, you can see the ladder moves out the door and into a larger kind of open area that's kind of appears to be the center of it. Um, at the core of it, you can see a lot of people that are kind of sitting there in meditation. A lot more of these, um, a lot more of these kind of green humanoids. Um, they seem to be meditating actually around a statue and the statue appears to be of a human uh, of a human man climbing a ladder carved out of stone the ladder within the room wraps all throughout and turns and twists and eventually curves out um another into another room that is up on the third floor jade groans really quietly you've got to be kidding Somehow these monks are worshipping this crazy idiot. Uh... Perhaps not him, perhaps his dedication. Um, and as you say that, um, you hear a voice kind of from behind you. Right you are, my friend. We do not worship him, but his single-minded determination to reach his goal. We have been awed by it. Uh, and you see this figure kind of appear behind you. You didn't hear them move. They move very quietly as well, just as well as you did, Jay. And once he had spoken, um, kind of revealing the presence to him, you see this uh, this, this gift standing before you. Are you also followers of Jacob? Do you study his uh, doctrines? Uh -oh. well, been... Go ahead. Well, we are following him, but no, we're not followers of him. We are here on request of his mother. We simply you... wish to protect him. Either way, you seek to follow in his path. It would not be my place to stop someone in this way. Although, there were some with less than savory intentions that passed by not long before. We rousted them quickly, and they continued their way along the ladder. Do you know where Jacob is? Ever building, climbing. And he just kind of gestures to the kind of where the ladder leads out of the fortress, eventually on the third floor. Wonderful. Um, well, we've had our, we have our heading. I say we go forward. Climb and climb and climb. Uh, and he gestures upwards and kind of gives a discreet bow um, as you um, eventually kind of move your way up and eventually make it to the kind of second floor moving along the ladder um, you reach the edge of the window and you can see um, you can see three figures uh, three of these morts now uh, you've caught up with the rest of them it's it's clear uh and you see them as the ladder kind of stretches in another kind of horizontal run um you can see the morts are all kind of laid out on the ladder um they're just like catching their breaths as they've gotten out of here 
Um, they're about 200 feet away from you on this vertical stretch as you are reaching the, the window on the second floor of this monastery. Mm -hmm. Hmm, I see exhausted Mort. I see easy prey. Um, what do you guys all do? Just keep climbing. All right. These continue the climb. Three, these three morts, they're just laying on the ladder. Yeah, they're just laying there, like catching their breaths. Uh, as you start to get closer, you can hear them just. Uh, 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 and then they see the group of you kind of moving down the ladder after them, and you see them all get up and just start, oh, God. Uh, and they just both, they all start kind of ducking it and continuing to move uh, along the ladder ahead of you, running away from you uh, towards this kind of glowing light that's far in the distance. Um, can Jade base? Oh wait, hold up! I know can Jade. Jade can. <laughs> Give me a moment. Uh, what do you uh, What do you want to do? Um, feline agility. All right. Oh, yes. So you can gain on them pretty quickly with this. Um, all right. Um, in this instance, um, I would like you all to roll for initiative. Uh, so as you kind of kick in your feline agility and start running at double the speed, they look back and see how quickly you're gaining on them. Uh, and they all just kind of go, yeah, we're not going to be able to outpace. Um, and they turn, and you see them pulling out weapons. Two of them kind of pull out axes. One of them, a crossbow. Um, as they are going to roll for initiative. Oh. 21, actually, the morts will act first. Um, you see the mort with the crossbow. Um, um, you see the mort with the crossbow readies and fires uh, at, the approaching, uh, at the approaching jade who's running up to make an attack against you. Uh, doesn't I assume an eight misses? Uh, completely. Uh, the bolt flies wide, uh, and over your shoulder you see it duck past you. Um, that's going to bring us to Alto. You're the next to act. How far away am I from them? Um, at this point, uh, I will say that you guys are about uh, sixty feet away. Uh, Jade only thirty feet with that kind of big move that she just made, that extra speed. Um, in order to make up that distance, I'm going to, first, I'm going to move my 40 feet. Um, okay, so you move 30 feet? 30? It's 10 less? Uh, well, you move 30 feet, and then you reach Jade, who's in front of you. So you're going to have to make some kind of uh, maneuver in order to get around Jade in this uh, in this moment. I only need to be three. I'll uh, take aim with one of my darts and All right. fire at the crossbowman. All right, go ahead and make me an attack roll. 24, That's absolutely. For four piercing damage, uh, you toss a dart at lightning. So actually, that's at disadvantage because you were 30 feet away because that's the 20, 60 foot range. It so is, you need to roll again. It is 30, 60. Uh, it says 20, 60 on the thing. Are you certain? Are you certain? Really? Um, uh, on the, uh, the thing that you posted my there. My apology. No problem. I was looking at the wrong thing. No worries. Uh, 21 definitely still hits, so we'll just, <laughs> you just keep the four damage. Uh, you toss it, and it flies and uh, strikes that mort right in kind of in the uh, in the kind of side of the face almost, and you see it rip through. And, uh, uh, um, still got his crossbow levied, uh, getting ready to hold his ground as best he can. That's going to bring us to Jade. What do you do? I'm sorry, did you have anything else, Alto? No, that is, that is right. my turn. Uh, How close Jade. am I to them again? Uh, 30 feet away. You can get up to them without issue, I assume. Yeah, I should. Um, All right, you bound, case... in, you bound in close. And uh, I'm going up to that nice little crossbowman who tried to shoot at me, and I'm not happy about that. Oh, well, so, actually, uh, and before you can get to that crossbowman, um, there are two axe wielders in the way. The crossbowman is at the back. 
Um, the uh-huh. two of them are kind of standing, balancing a little bit on either side. As you get cl- as you get in range of them, they are going to use a ready to action, um, which is to attack you when you get close enough. Um, and what they're doing actually is not attacking, but attempting to grapple you. Um, okay. Uh, that's a, go ahead and make me an acrobatics check. You need to complete oh, a 22 from the first one. Come on. <laughs> oh man, nice! Oh my god. Uh, and another, the other one is also attempting to grapple you. Um, twenty. Oh man, they're rolling really well. Can you beat a twenty? Oh uh, no, the other one gets you. Um, mm-hmm. You still get to make. Uh, you said you're going to make an attack when you got in range, right? This all happens simultaneously. So if you want to make an attack roll, Jade, you can do that. Uh, go ahead and roll damage on that because that definitely hits. Nine points of damage. All right, yeah, you uh, stab into this mort. Um, one of them goes to, like, grab onto with both arms. You duck underneath. Um, the other one, you kind of stab in the leg, but as you stab into him, he kind of leans into the stab and <laughs> grabs onto your body and goes to uh, toss you over this and attempts to toss you over the side of the ladder. Um, I need you to make me a dexterity saving throw. Oh, Um, let me change the music. I forgot to do that. Um, 14 <laughs> is is just enough. Um, you're kind of thrown a little bit to the side, but uh, managed to uh, grab onto the ladder and are now kind of hanging precariously uh, fa- before falling into the uh, the void of uh, the void of limbo. Um, the morts are starting to actually look pretty hurt. They're not super tough. That's going to bring us now to... Um, that is going to bring us to Baron Luton Plunder. Well, I see they've come to play rough. I play rough, too. Oh, I did it on the wrong. Uh, 12 points. Which one are you going to shoot at? Um, I will fire two of them at the first one that missed and then one at the uh, one she stabbed. Okay. Um, so so be nine uh, and one and three at the other. Or what? Or eight um, and one and four yeah. at the other. Right? Okay. Um, it's I yeah. <laughs> Good enough. Uh, eight. <laughs> Uh, courses out and strikes that one individual. Um, four on the other. Both of them get hit. Both of them are kind of like thrown and wobbled a bit. Um, but it does not, uh, it's not quite enough to finish off either of them. Um, are you going to move or are you going to stay where you are 60 feet back? I will move up 30 feet. All right. So you're right behind, uh, you're right behind Alto. Estrella. Yes. Estrella will just keep moving up the ladder, but she's going to call out to them and say, you guys really should surrender, you know. You have to decide what's more important to you, your money or your life. Um, at sounds like an intimidation point, no, At this point, there's no sense of talking to them. Guess attack. No, I talk to them. Um, intimidation, is that what that is? Uh, or pretty much. Persuasion? Uh, she's trying to persuade them, but the threat of death might be intimidating. Okay. Yeah, so go ahead and make me a roll an intimidation check. Either way, they're both in the negative one for me, so... Ten. Um, um, you hear the two morts just kind of... The two morts seem to be too kind of locked into their struggle uh, with Jade at the moment to uh, to pay your words much heed, but you move up. Are you going to move up 30 feet, or are you going to try and move farther past uh, with, like, a dash action or something? Yeah, I'll um, take a require... dash action to get up to them. All right, it would require an acrobatics check to move past um, them safely. Uh, without kind of falling while you're trying to move around your allies on the ladder. So go ahead and make an acrobatics check. Oh no. Um, you've, Astrea starts to slip and fall uh, down and backwards. Uh, go ahead and um, make me a deck save to try and grab on as you're falling. You get another chance, but then you're starting to go down. Nope. <laughs> Nine. Nine. Yep. Astrea, um, as they're trying to move past you, um, sh- she goes to reach up and just her feet slip out from under the ladder uh, with a stray kind of piece of wood that uh, bricks and falls backwards. Um, you are not falling, like, 
you are in space a little bit under the ladder is where this instant ends. Um, someone could t- potentially save you, but it would require a lot of risk on their part. Um, but you are falling, uh, Straya. Uh, that, is, that is going to... Um, uh, that is going to bring us, I believe, to the top of the initiative, which is the Mort's. Uh, the Mort with the crossbow is going to make another attack at you, Jade. Uh, does a 14 hit? Ooh, does a 14 hit. I think that's really close. Ugh. Come on. If it does, you take six points 14. of damage. Ugh. 14 matches. <laughs> Excuse me. 14 matches? Yes. Uh, that means it hits, so you take six points. Um, actually, I'm sorry, that, that attack would not have been against you because I forgot that you were hanging on the ladder. That makes no sense. Um, instead, that is against Alto. Does a 14 hit you, Alto? It does not. Okay, so yeah, that actually misses. So you're, you're good. Um, you're good, Jade, but you're not good. Oh, whoa. My music just cut out. Did that cut out for you, or is it still going for you guys? We can I can still hear it. <clears throat> That's very it. strange. Okay, I will assume that it's going then. Um, in that case, um, the other two, uh, one of the ones that had grappled you before, Jade, um, you're kind of holding on to, uh, you're kind of holding on to the ladder um, from the bottom. One of them is going to try and step on your hands uh, and try and make you let go. I would like you to make me um, either a strength or a constitution saving throw, whichever one you're better at. Your ability to avoid pain, your ability to hold on despite the threat. I'll let you pick which one you make. Oh, God. Oh, that's... Constitution save. Jade, you're holding onto the ladder, and then you just feel this sharp pain as one of the morts looks down at you, uh, and he just, fall, cat, uh, and, and stomps down, and you feel your finger, uh, your fingers let go and release, uh, and you begin to fall as well uh, alongside Estrella. Um, the other ones has the... Uh, has their axe out and is going to run along the ladder to you, Alto, and make an attack against you. Oh boy, I hope my plan works. Does a 20 hit. For four points of, uh, four points of damage. Um, all right, uh, Jade, the turn is yours. You are falling right now, falling into space. Um, if you don't do something on this action, you will likely fall to your demise. Strea says, I'll catch you. Trust me. <sighs> she really hates trusting people. <laughs> okay, fine. She'll trust you. You're going to put, gonna you're gonna put your faith in Estrella? I'm a, but I got one question. How close is one of those flo- uh, floating floating boulder, boulders? I noticed them um, around here. Um, you take a look around and scanning, trying to remember the floating boards from before. Um, there's a couple that are are, are going to be close. You're going to hit them with a pretty hard impact. But if worst came to worst, you could maybe um, you could maybe hit one. It might just hitting one might hurt you and like end up killing you. But it's better than just void, uh, is your kind of thought process. Um, so maybe you could uh, land one of those if you control your flight a little bit. Um, uh, so okay. for now, are you just going to wait? I'm going to trust Australia. All right. In that case, I believe the next in initiative was uh, actually it should have already been Alto. My mistake. Uh, Alto, what do you do? Um, I am going to punch this person many, many times. Please do that. Uh, so I'm first going to attack him. Yep. Go ahead. Absolutely hits. The whack works. And then I will spend one key point to hit him twice more. Um, all of those hit for sure. Um, and okay, for yeah. a total of fifteen points to this man. Uh, three powerful punches all fly and connect. Um, this. Um, this more uh, uh, takes uh, takes all of the hits, uh, and you see him kind of stumble and fall. Uh, and he goes. You see him for a brief moment, seem like he's going to right himself and attack again, and then he just seems to like lose consciousness and fall to the side off the ladder, um, already unconscious before the fall. Um, no, it seems to definitely be gravity. Uh, and then um, 
All right. Is there anything else on your turn? Uh, that's that's all for you, or do you want to run up to get in range of the other one? Um, I am going to run up and get in range of the other one. Okay. Um, yep. So now you're in uh, threat range. That's going to bring us to uh, Baron Luton Plunder. What do you do? Oh, I think we know where this is going. I'm just going to refresh my roll 20 very quickly. At the other Axeman. Um, all right. All right. Nine damage combined with the damage from before, uh, along with uh, Jade Strike. <laughs> the, the magic missiles <laughs> hit this mort, and this mort also <laughs> uh, tumbles to the side, and you hear him with the... <laughs> Uh, collapse over and fall off of the ladder. There is the one remaining with the crossbow, um, which um, at this point, the one with the crossbow um, does not seem to really like their odds. Uh, and you see them just kind of drop the crossbow and throw their hands up. Um, and that is going to bring us to Astraea. Astraea, right. you and Jade are falling. So how far am I from the ladder? Um... At this point, you've fallen about. Uh, at this point, you've fallen about twenty feet. No, no, but like, is the ladder still like within my reach as I'm falling? Um, that was what the dexterity save was for to see if you were able to grab it as you were falling. But now I'm falling away from it, so it's no longer in my reach. Yes. Okay. I will still attempt to catch Jade, but I have to adjust okay. my plan a little now. <laughs> Um, so yeah, how, how do I roll for catching uh, Athletics, you will say. Okay. Pretty 18, good. yeah. Um, Jade's kind of falling to the side of you. You kind of twist your body around in space and grab onto Jade, and you're kind of holding onto Jade by the arm, and you uh, pull her in tight. Um, what else? You're still uh, plummeting, uh, plummeting downwards. Catch and throw, catch and throw. <laughs> that would sacrifice me. Uh, what do you do, fine. Australia? Uh, hey, better to have three party members than two. <laughs> <laughs> What's the plan? What's the plan? It's up to you, Australia. What do you do? I will attempt to tie my rope around her waist. Okay. And then throw so. her. <laughs> All right. That works too. That's, uh, that's going to be... That's a lot of stuff to do in one instant. Um, Action will... surge. Oh, damn! Yep, yeah. you can absolutely do it. Uh, <laughs> so you tie the rope around with your fighter. This one moment of... Play, go ahead. This is going to be just a raw strength check. Um, and I will say that because you didn't use your action before, um, you didn't use your action before uh, Jade that you have advantage on it, because I'm assuming Jade is helping you and jumping off of you as you nice. throw. So go ahead and make me a strength check with advantage. Oh, oh, oh 19! Thank God. Um, 19. So, Jade, you push <laughs> upward with the force from Australia, and Jade, you fly up and over the ladder, but the rope wrapped around your chest loops you, so now the two of you are, like, hanging in, like, a balance that's shifting a little bit towards Australia uh, as you're starting to lose it. But, um, but you are on either side, um, like the uh, like the the scales of the scales of judgment uh, on either side <laughs> of this ladder. Um, as that brings us to the top of the initiative, and honestly, there's one more who has dropped his weapon. There is no more threat to you. Eventually, you will be able to get them up uh, in this one very dramatic moment. Um, so um, there's one more. The mort looks to you. I'm gonna go back, if that's okay. I know I shot at you, you shot at me. We can call it even, right? No. Jay punches him. Uh, and as you say no, um, just one <laughs> swift kind of turn and hand, and you just see him fall oh, over the side. I'll, I'll won't make you roll for it because at this point it's not uh, what you can do about it. Alto's gonna look down at him as he's falling and just repeat what they said and be like fall cat um i'm not a cat as he's falling um <laughs> no but you're right. dead <laughs> so bef before you um before you the ladder stretches on it's a little bit more distance but you can now see the light up ahead it is the only thing 
left before you. What right, color is the light? The light is a brilliant gold and white. I'll climb back up onto the ladder and, I guess, retrieve my uh, rope. I will approach yeah. this light. All right, you all just kind of continue scrambling down the ladder until each one at a time you pass through the light. Um, as you do, there's only a little bit more ladder left. And then at the end of it, you see just kind of a small platform. Uh, you see kind of a small platform with a little, with, with a man, long beard, scraggly hair, uh, sitting on it and looking out over a vista that is... Um, just all of these towering mountains, one in particular that reaches up forever, and it's just a plane of light. You see angels flying about all around. Um, yeah, that's where you are. Um, this boy's just looking up, or this man's just kind of looking up into the distance. Um, so it was right on along, we, huh? Who would have known? We shouldn't be seeing this. Let's grab the guy and go. Wait, Jacob. Yes. Who is there? Your mother sent us. <laughs> she did. I'm not surprised. He just has the widest of smiles on his faces. I guess I should go visit her then. I'm done here anyway. What was your goal? Um, and he says, well, it was to meet the gods. And I have. Uh, and you can see what looks to be um, just a large number of kind of beacons of light um, that are kind of disappearing into the sky of Mount Celestia uh, as the group of you uh, all enter into this room or all enter into this just small platform amidst this portal. Um, and he looks, shall we go back? Yes, I'm sure she would be very, very pleased to see. Very well. Uh, and he smiles and kind of shakes all of your hands. Thank you for sending the message. Um, Stray just looks very confused at him. Uh, very well. And that is where this adventure, I think, is going to end, as oh. once you eventually get back down, you all earn 100 Bartholomew bucks and gain one experience point. Um... And Level congratulations eight. on on saving on saving Jacob. Um, Thank you. Yes, and we all live to fight another day. Yes, uh, indeed you did. Um, and uh, that congratulations. is all. Congratulations! Yeah, you guys did a great job. I thought you were all gonna die for a minute there. Nope. That was a pretty. That was a pretty sweet. Uh, that was a pretty sweet move.